Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. So, this package versus nuke challenge over here is something we've been tinkering around with all year. I just wanted to kind of get people up to date on where we're at. And also, we're going to look into this colony a little bit. Some of these colonies got different treatments. Some of these colonies would not be alive if it was not for certain things that we did in our videos. If you want to go to one of our playlists and watch some of the package versus nuke challenge videos from how we installed the nukes, how we installed the packages, how we added more space, how we fed them, how we treated them. Um, we got to most of it. We didn't get to all of it, but we got to a lot of different things. And we hit the, the major points, and that was the packages really struggled. Now, there's a lot of variables out there. We're going to touch this, so you know, buckle up and hang on tight, because we're going to go uh, on some rabbit trails here. Right? But we will get into that colony, I promise. So, initially, we installed these the first week of April. Three weeks before those nucleus colonies over there. Those were produced by us, just like what we sold to our customers, and they were five frames. They were they were nice, um, and you know our queens that we raised ourselves, the whole nine yards, and the mite levels were low, which makes a big difference. You have to watch that with nucleus colonies. Uh, it's a great way to also get a high mite load if, if you're purchasing nukes that have not been um, managed properly. Packages usually aren't quite so high, but they can be high too. But one of the things that happened is that these guys had a hard time taking off. This one did pretty well, but it still did not just excel, and I'm fixing to show you that in a second. This one right here went queenless about a month and a half or so, maybe two months after it was installed. Just no super procedures, didn't even try. I, I just go in there to inspect one day, and there's nothing. Uh, you know, there's just, there's hardly, there's like some old cap brood. And, but there's there's no queen cells or anything like that. That is not a normal trait, um, I think, for quality bees. I don't know exactly why that happened. Very weird. Um, that, that does happen sometimes, but I don't see it very much with the bees that I raised myself. But having decent experience with packages in the past, that's something that um, you should expect with some packages, um, especially earlier on. And some people are like, it's the genetics. It's because they're not local, or it's this, or it's that. I'm telling you, it's because they're not properly maintained and well-mated. Genetics, sure, they could be better. I've had some packaged queens that did pretty well, but overall most of them don't do so hot. It's one thing you have to watch out for, and that's because they have a monstrous demand. The industry has so much demand on these early packages, and the commercial beekeepers are pushing the very beginning of the season. And unless the weather is just right and the conditions are just right, you end up with a lot of poorly mated queens. And, and I think some of the guys aren't uh, living to the standards that they should as far as, you know, that's a runty cell, queen cell. Don't be putting that in a nuke. You know, or that's that queen. She might not be all the way mated <laughs> or not even mated at all, and they're sending you a virgin. Um, it, it's a... You know, fast-paced business, and I'm sure there's some businesses that keep their nose clean, but uh, I'm, I'm not really overall um, impressed with the com commercial package industry. I understand they have a lot of pressure and a lot of things they got to do as well, but um, ultimately, they don't have to worry about a whole lot of backlash either because the demand's so high. If the customer decides that they don't want to buy from them, they'll just go to another package supplier and, and, and do the run around. And it's really hard on new beekeepers because, uh, you know, you're not getting into this so your bees are going to perish every year. You see a lot of guys and gals get into beekeeping and they get their one package or two packages and they run into the issues that we have with these two. Go back and watch those videos. If um, I'll, I'll try to leave some links below. This one, the queen just would not grow the hive at all. She just had a terrible pattern. This one just went queenless. This one we're fixing to show you some more about. but. If you've done a decent bit of packages, or if you're getting into beekeeping and you decide to go with packages, then this is something that you can, you might see. I hope not, but you might see this, and, and this will help. We had to take multiple frames of brood from these over here, these nucleus colonies of ours. Both of these were packed doubles at one point, and we were pulling frames of brood, and we did that in the videos, and we were putting them into these hives over here. Because what happens when your colony is really out of balance, when there's no brood or very few nurse bees, and especially in the dearth period in our summer, when there's not a lot of nutrition, you've got old bees, you've got uh, not a whole lot of nutrition coming in, the bees are stressed, and they're old, it's hard for them to accept queens. So even if you get in one of these situations, you order a queen in from somebody, it could be the world's best queen. A lot of times the bees won't accept her. 
And that's why we were pulling bees over here. And if it was not for those two nukes, these colonies right here would not be doing so good. Check this out. You know, that's not the world's greatest hive, but they're working on that mountain camp sugar and eating it away. That's a good cluster. They'll do good. But we had to give them one of our queens and a couple frames, at least two frames of good brood to this colony and at least two to three to that one. Now, this one we didn't give any brood to, but they just wouldn't build right. You know, these drew all of their foundations out into nice, beautiful comb. They also, I think as I pointed out earlier, they made two splits. These are great splits that we made. Let's check this one out real quick. Well, it helps to pry it open. Well, it's winter time. Everything's a little harder to pry. Oh, there's, there's a good bit of bees down here. There's a bunch of them are up in the top already. You know, I'd say there's probably eight frames of bees in this, which is a decent sized cluster. And so, we have just been, you know, working our bees, and that's why we recommend you have more than one. It's also why we are so aggressively pushing sustainability. Learn how to just raise a couple queens a year. If you only want a few hives, you can do that. I really like the idea of having two or three main hives and then maintaining, like, two nukes behind it. One of your hives has an issue, maybe it goes completely queenless like that one does. Maybe you lose a swarm because you're on vacation or something. You take one of those nukes and you plug it right on in. There, there's a lot of things that can happen in beekeeping. And, and nobody indefinitely just has bees that do fantastic forever without work. Now, can you maintain the numbers that you have? If you're really proactive, I believe you can. But that's not because your hives just stay the way they are and just stay the way they are and stay the way they are. It's because you're putting in work and sometimes you're pulling frames of brood from this colony to this colony and you're helping the whole yard work together and that's that's really the job of a beekeeper we're bee stewards we manage the bees we give them the best chance of survival doesn't mean we'll always breed from that one that has a lot of issues but we are going to help them out and then requeen later all right now check this out over here we're going to get into this hive bees are a little antsy today I guess ANSI really wouldn't apply much for bees, now would it? This colony right here, we use oxalic acid and apivar only for treatment. Now they're clustered up just a little bit. You know, it's, it's about upper 40s today. A lot of people tell you not to do this, and you know, there's no reason that we have to do this. We're doing this to educate. It's not going to hurt the bees. Now some people are also going to tell you, tell you don't ever pull a frame from the mill, you might roll the queen. I'm widening the space up before I pull it. I'm very careful. Still always need to be very cautious. Ooh, look at those bees coming at me. Even after a little bit of smoke. It's not the time of the year. These bees are extremely gentle during a nectar flow, but they have work to do at that point. Right now, they're just like, this is the time of year, beekeeper, where you're supposed to leave us alone. You know, they're not really clustered that tight. Excuse me. Thank you. Let's see. Do we have any brood over there, Laura? Oops, I pinched one a little bit. You. Oh, wow. Okay, we do. We've done one oxalic acid vapor treatment. We got a little bit of capped brood. I wonder how much we got in here. I'm not going to pull everything apart. Ooh, one just went up my shirt sleeve. Wow, okay, wow. Look at that brood over here. Pretty nice. I'm gonna blow a little bit, but the bees aren't gonna like it. Nope, not at all. So some of this is hatching out. I think I just saw a varroa mite, but I don't see it again. Yeah, there's some young stuff. Eggs down in here. That's great. We're not gonna look through this anymore. I'm not seeing the queen, but I'm sure she's in there somewhere. I, I saw some eggs. Which, I mean, this time of the year you don't need to be looking for your queen unless you just happen across her and you're a crazy person like myself. Now, again, if you're further south than me, you very well possibly should be getting into your hives and checking them out. These bees have plenty of food down here, but look at this upper box. Excuse me, bee. We didn't 
do anything as far as we installed the package, we fed this one, but we didn't pull frames of brood from this one, we didn't add frames of brood. But keep in mind, these two, we were cleaned with our queens, and this one right here, just due to lack of performance, it was having such an issue drawing the combs, and check this out. This was the top box right here. And the bees oftentimes cluster down below and then work their way up in a double deep. But they just, they had a lot of combs like this. And we fed them hard. We fed them harder than the nucleus colonies. They were installed before them. This is problems with, I think, poor mating. Poor diversity in the hive, whether it's because the queen didn't get enough diversity in the, in the drone mating. Maybe it is a little bit of the genetics. But then again, I don't know. I've heard some of these, you know, breeder queens that they're using are supposed to be really nice. Either way, they were not working out. We requeen that colony. I bet it's going to be awesome this coming year. That's an older comb right there. Anyways, I just wanted to show you kind of what's going on. Look, just look at that right there. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take um, a, a little roller and we're going to melt some beeswax. We'll show you how to do that. And we're just going to melt it on here. We're going to put it back on. I really think now that we requeened re late fall with our queen, this hive's really going to take off this spring and do well. But we'll be keeping you up today. I just wanted to kind of show you that we're still going to be doing package versus nuke challenge. We put them in. We babied them. We got those videos. You can go back and watch if you need to. And we're going to be showing you how we make honey on their first full, you know, their, I guess they'll be a full year old in April. So around that time, we'll be starting to make their first honey crop off of them. And we'll show you how we deal with that. And, you know, we're not bringing in uh, you know, resources from any of our other hives. This is all the, the comb, all the brood and everything come from here. Anyways, if you have any comments or questions about this video, leave them below.